Good morning. Industry clustering is an important metric that business executives and economists use, and it refers to grouping industries in the same local area, along with an ecosystem of strong universities and venture capital that are tied to that industry. Clustering, concentrating industrial talent and resources in this way, leads to big gains in productivity and innovation within that industry. In the United States, Hollywood is a prime example of how Los Angeles has lots of movie studios, creative talent, and local universities which lead the world in filmmaking and animation. New York City has Wall Street, NYU, Columbia University, and Silicon Valley is the biggest cluster for the American IT industry with Stanford and Cal and the other UC schools and huge venture capital firms there, plus all the biggest tech companies that make Silicon Valley such an important science and technology cluster for the United States. Everyone knows about Silicon Valley, but the five biggest science and technology clusters are here in East Asia. And for the second year in a row, China has more S&T clusters in the top 100 than anyone else. 26 compared to 20 in the United States, followed by Germany with eight. There's a lot about that which is surprising, but most of all, it's that these Chinese cities didn't really exist at all 30 years ago. Shenzhen is the world's second biggest science and technology cluster. It's not merely that there was no technology industry in Shenzhen just 30 years ago, it's that there was no Shenzhen 30 years ago. It was a small fishing town, population under 200,000 recently. Now it's one of the biggest cities in the world and the second biggest tech city in the world. 90% of all the world's electronics go through Shenzhen now. In order for China to build a high-tech cluster in Shenzhen, China also had to build Shenzhen. And so Shenzhen's boom serves as a terrific example of how China's urbanization, moving huge populations of people from the countryside to the cities, coincided with purposing these Chinese cities to be industrial hubs. Here is a chart that shows the population growth in Shenzhen. On a percentage growth basis, Shenzhen is the fastest growing megacity in the world, going from about 200,000 people in 1990 to over 14 million today. This chart is the urbanization rate of the United States compared to China. The United States urbanized at an even faster rate than China ever did. The curve of the blue line, the United States, is steeper from 1840 to 1955 than China's from 1985 to now. In 2005, China's urbanization level was the same as in the United States at the turn of the century the turn of the last century, 1900. The difference though is that China's population in the 1990s was orders of magnitude higher compared to the United States 100 years ago. So the economic effects have been orders of magnitude higher. And China still has a long way to go with another 300 million or so who will be added to China's cities over the next decades. In other words, the urbanization of China is going to continue and China's industrial clusters is going to grow even further. In North America and in Europe, industry clustering took place over decades, even centuries. But China's urbanization and its clustering has been much more specific and targeted. Here in Shandong province, the cities were built with heavy industry in mind. A Chinese company that builds bulldozers or locomotives is going to be in Jinan or here in Qingdao. This is a really handy map where you can click on a Chinese province and it shows the industries that are clustered there, the biggest names in these industrial hubs. And if you're a global business executive who buys furniture, for example, you can use this tool and see where the biggest clusters are, which makes it easy to do 20 factory visits in a month because they're all in the same area. With respect to science and technology clustering, we keep getting surprised at how quickly China is able to innovate around the semiconductor export bans, for example. We shouldn't be surprised. 
science and technology clusters serve as the backbone of a robust national innovation system. And San Francisco Silicon Valley is used as their example here, along with the university system, scientists, top companies, and inventors. And this is a ranking of the top 100 S&T clusters in the world. Nanjing in China has just moved into the top 10, replacing San Diego, which moved down to 10, and New York City, now out of the top 10. They moved San Diego and New York City down to make room for Nanjing. China is also home to the two fastest growing clusters. Hefei jumped 22% and Zhangzhou grew by 19. Zhangzhou isn't quite as surprising. That's where they make so many of the iPhones for Apple. In fact, they just added another 50,000 tech workers in Zhangzhou to make iPhones. But if you knew before that Hefei in Anhui province is the fastest growing science and technology supercluster in the world, you're either a major industry player or you live there. Hardly anyone outside of China has ever heard of the place, and it's a top 100 and growing at 22% a year. To illustrate how all these developments are orchestrated and planned, let's look at a science and technology sub-sub segment, an industry within an industry within an industry, you could say. This survey examines China's work on artificial intelligence inside the life sciences. China's robust effort to merge human and artificial intelligence, which would mean a first mover advantage in AI competition, biological experimentation and DNA sequencing are producing giant volumes of data, and AI is necessary to make sense of all that data, to create new therapies and medicines. That research is going to impact pharmaceuticals and medicine, obviously, and agriculture and energy. The paper goes on to say that these technologies have wide ranging commercial, ethical, and national security implications. And the first country that gets there is going to have lots of advantages. But China has already determined where all those companies and universities are gonna be. Here are the cities on the map, and we see the clustering effect again. The Beijing cluster will have 23 AI industrial areas and 34 for biology all co-located, sharing raw materials, university departments, and even banking systems. The other biggest clusters will be in Shanghai and Guangdong. This is an industry that did not exist at all 10 years ago because DNA next generation sequencing was a novel technology and the fastest AI processors had not yet been invented. Now China intends to build that whole industry right here in these 17 cities. The universities and research departments don't exist yet, so they're going to be built. And the companies that do work with those research departments will be given buildings and capital in the same neighborhood where all that research is being done, then applied immediately by the commercial sector, and then taught to thousands of Chinese undergraduate students who are going to graduate and go to work in those same companies. And starting right now, Chinese industry experts are identifying potential bottlenecks in supply chains and are busy eliminating those so that China will be self-sufficient in the technology, the software, and whatever hardware components and materials are required. Those efforts, in turn, inform their banking and financial systems and diplomatic efforts to secure those supplies wherever they are in the world and whatever they cost. That's the system nationwide, economy-wide, for every single industry in the world. This is Tai Lake, Zhejiang province. Be good. Thank you.